elsewhere in the NBA, Robert Sarver reportedly is going to sell the Suns and the Mercury of the WNBA. Hallelujah! 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 Robert Sarver has been one of the single worst owners in sports. Forget the NBA, in sports. He has been a Western Conference version of James Dolan for nearly 20 years. It's only because Chris Paul got there and they got lucky in the Monty Williams hire in the last two years that the Suns aren't the dregs, dysfunctional, disastrous Phoenix Suns that they had been since he bought the team. I mean, the Suns have just butchered basketball for nearly 20 years of the desert. And they were once the model or a model organization. And then Sarver bought them in 04 and just they've been wretched before the last two seasons when Chris Paul got there. Sarver, under pressure, did not have the team taken away by the league, did not have the other owners vote him out. Instead, apparently came to his own conclusion on this after they were going to suspend him for a year and fine him $10 million. bucks. First question is why, and then we're going to get to Sarver personally. The why, my read on this is, and I'm not sure I believe it entirely, but that there was a business prospect here that Sarver felt he might not necessarily survive or would lose a lot of money on. That being, PayPal is on their patch. That's their uniform advertiser, and PayPal pulled out and said, if Sarver's the owner, we're not advertising. Maybe there were other, my assumption is there were other businesses or advertisers that began pulling away from the Suns in the wake of this report, not wanting to be connected to a guy that used racist language, had misogynistic behavior, and overall acted like a meathead idiot frat boy for 18 years running the team. I mean, that's basically what it is. You know, he had... He was a guy that thought very highly of himself and knew he could not be held accountable, so said whatever he wanted to say was probably just not a good guy to be around. And you could see how the team worked. I mean, the, the team was terrible, and nobody liked working there. So why is that? Robert Sarver. That the type of guy. We know that type of guy. The obnoxious sometimes offensive, thinks he's funny and he's not, but he's always invited to the party because he knows the right people. We, we know that guy. That He ran the Suns. He owned the Suns for 18 years. And I think advertisers and business people just must have been like, yeah, we don't want to be associated now that all of this is out, not good for our brand, or... We actually are taking a stand. We don't We don't like what he stands for. One of the two, combination of both, whatever that is, there was a financial aspect in this. There might have also been a fear from Robert Sarver or those around Robert Sarver that, hey, when the, when the season starts, players are going to keep talking more and more about you. LeBron had some comments about this, obviously, said they should have taken away the team. Chris Paul had some comments about this. Draymond Green said we should take a vote. Let's see which owners have his back. And there might have just been a fear from Sarver that during the year of being away from the team that the noise would still be that the players would keep talking about this and maybe never kind of allow him to come retake the team in any type of normalcy again. Maybe, and I don't think this is the case, but maybe Robert Sarver just read the room and said, I don't want to be the most unpopular guy here. I don't want to be the pariah. 
although I doubt that because Sarver doesn't strike me as a guy that cares what other people think. If he's the pariah, he's going to say, screw you. I'm not giving up the team. There might just be this. Oh, you want to find me $10 million? Well, now I'm going to cash out and laugh all the way to the bank because I don't need this. That one seems the most likely. Because now we'll get to Robert Sarver himself. In 2004, Sarver spent $400 million to buy the Sun. Sounds like a big, large amount of money, right? Who's got $400 million lying around to go buy a, a franchise? He spent $400 million to buy the Phoenix Suns and the Mercury back in 2004. When he sells now, the price tag will be between $2.5 billion and $3 billion. An extraordinarily desirable product in a big market where people like to live, that can draw free agents, and has a really good, very loyal, long-time fan base. I mean, go back to the 80s, even the 70s. Phoenix Suns games were always the best-attended Phoenix product, Arizona product. Now, a lot of the teams came later. The Cardinals came in the late 80s. The Diamondbacks in the 90s. The Coyotes in the 90s. Nothing's... Nothing was ever as well attended as the Suns used to be when they were good. They're still the legacy team in Arizona, but they've been awful. The Cardinals went indoors. They built a nice stadium, et cetera, and, you know. But the Suns have a really good brand in Phoenix if you did it right. And the last two years with them being really good, you've seen the fever of Suns basketball in Phoenix. So, Sarver is going to cash out on a minimum of a $2.1 billion profit, and it could be up to $2.6 billion he makes profit by being a DB, by being a flea bag, dirt bag owner. He's going to make, by being the West Coast James Dolan, he's going to make $2.5 billion. And with that in his pocket, has the gall to say it's because we live in an unforgiving climate. Sarver invoked the, I'm a man of faith. Oh, isn't it always the men of faith? (laughs) Isn't it always? I'm a man of faith and I believe in redemption. And all these great things I've done over 20 years of owning the team, like bringing people together, apparently is being forgotten. And in this unforgiving climate, I'm getting railroaded out of my teams. Actually, not really. Adam Silver said, we can't take away the team. And the owner said, we're not going to take away the team from you. So I don't know who you feel railroaded by. They were going to let you go and sit on your yacht for a year pay a measly $10 million fine, and get to come back. I I don't see exactly where the unforgiving climate is because your business associates weren't going to do anything. This unforgiving climate of what? LeBron tweeting? An unforgiving climate of what? The media saying you're scummy? The unforgiving climate of what? Fans want you to sell? What what exactly is the unforgiving part? Because you don't have to sell. But this victimhood, that everybody wears so comfortably in 2022 even afflicts the billionaires. Think about what Robert Sarver did or did not do. He bought into one of the most popular professional sports enterprises in the world, ran the franchise into the ground mostly for 20 years, was a guy nobody liked working for, said offensive things, did offensive things, and will cash out for $2.1 billion profit at a minimum. And wears the victimhood costume. Everybody's against me, and I'm the good guy. Life is so unfair. I mean, this is exactly what James Dolan will eventually do. It's amazing Dolan hasn't been caught in the same type of operation, the same type of behavior, the same type of expose, because this is just 
by the book what James Dolan's going to end up doing at some point in time, where people finally have sources sourcing a report on his abusive behavior within his walls. We will note that the basketball's been wretched for 20 years. Notably, all under him it changed. And then eventually he's going to be forced to sell for $3.5 billion and say it's because of an unforgiving climate. I was done wrong. All Robert Sarver did was run a terrible operation and watch the league get pop- popular. You know, think about this from a billionaire sports standpoint. Let's just say there was only 30 burger places in the entire country that were allowed to make burgers. That's it. Now, we know the American public loves hamburgers. But only 30 places can make them. And you happen to have enough money to buy into one of the burger places. And the burger places share revenue. McDonald's and Burger King and Hardee's, Carl's Jr. and Five Guys, Wendy's and Pick Your Burger Chains, all 30 share their burger revenue because everybody loves burgers. You can't do without them. But you can't go to a mom and pop to get burgers. You can't go to a a restaurant that's like a diner that makes burgers because there's only burger places. And you buy in, and for 20 years, you just watch the American public gobble up burgers at all these other places, and your burgers are the worst. Your cooks suck, the meat you get sucks, it's cheap meat, it's bad buns, the climate is terrible, everybody hates your restaurant, but you get to share all the revenue of burgers. And then in 20 years, you get to cash out of your burger place, not because your burgers were good, but just because everybody loves burgers and everybody else is doing them better than you. That's Robert Sarver or any of these billionaire owners that cash out. Donald Sterling was the worst owner, but made billions of dollars of profit because he just rode the league's popularity. That's what Robert Sarver did. I'd love for somebody to tell Robert Sarver, you were terrible at your job and you still made $2 billion. Do you realize you had nothing to do with it? You just had the money to buy in. You didn't do anything. You were the worst at this. Do you get it? You you can't have an ego. You were the very worst of the people making burgers. Happy day in Phoenix. If you're a Suns fan, a Mercury fan, you should love this. This is good news. No more Sarver. When we come back on the show, it's a thirsty Thursday. Let's toast to the good stuff. DA, CBS Sports Radio.